Welcome to part two. This is just going to be some housekeeping stuff. Um, I say that because not everyone who wants to take a look at this tutorial and follow along, and you absolutely have to follow along to really learn this stuff, um, some people aren't going to want to jump in and like replace their current operating system, whether it's Windows or Mac OS in most cases, uh, with Linux. Um, and I understand. And even things that are pretty easy now, like dual booting, so setting up a Linux operating system next to your Windows or Mac OS X operating system and then choosing at boot which one you want to go into, that can still be a little scary for some people. So uh, I'm just going to talk about an alternative here and show you how to do it. There is another alternative, obviously, which is just taking an old computer, like a laptop or an old desktop, and installing just Linux on that. But I find that it's nice to have uh, on your primary machine so that you're always kind of motivated uh, to be using it. Okay, so the way we're going to do it is we're going to install Linux as a virtual machine or a VM. And what that is is basically it's an application um, on your computer uh, which will basically create an environment for another operating system to run just like any other application. And so that operating system, in this case Linux, won't know that it's not on a physical machine. There's two parts to this. First we download the operating system, then we uh, download the the virtual box software, so the software that's going to let us install that operating system on your machine now without touching your current operating system. And then I'll show you how to install it. And that install process will be just about the same um, whether you're doing it in a virtual machine or on a real computer. Okay, so step one is going uh, to the Linux distributions website. Now there's lots of different distributions. I'm going to use Ubuntu here, not because I think it's the best one, but because it's extremely popular, extremely well supported. So um, you're going to basically see it everywhere. Um, if you want to work with Linux, you're going to run into this, and you need to be prepared. It's not my favorite uh, distribution, um, but you should know it. Okay, so Ubuntu's website is ubuntu.com, and just skip all the marketing and go to slash download slash desktop. I debated on whether or not to use a server operating system. They, they have a server version without um, a graphical user interface as well, but just for just for ease of use we're going to go with the desktop version. We're going to be spending most of our time in the terminal though. This is not going to be like how to use Office on Linux or something. Um, okay, so go ahead and start the download. Um, you don't care about extended support versions, so just scroll down for the latest one. This might be 13.10. If it's later in the year, it, it'll be uh, 14... Uh, what is it? 14.4? Wow, yeah. Um, every six months a new version comes out, but it's not really... I mean, it's just sort of updated binaries. It, it doesn't matter. So choose the download. They're going to ask you for money, but you don't have to pay any money. So just scroll to the bottom and say, uh, no thanks, Canonical. The download will start. Just click OK. OK. Our second move is going to virtualbox.org. This is an Oracle project. Um, and this is what's going to allow us to run a virtual machine. So go to virtualbox.org. Click on Downloads. and just download one of these binaries. Um, you're probably most likely on a Windows machine, so you'll download this. So download here, just click Save File, just like uh, for Ubuntu, and then just wait for the downloads to complete. Okay, our downloads have completed. So just go ahead and install VirtualBox. It will ask you a bunch of times if you want to authorize software by Oracle, blah, 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 virtual adapters, blah, 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 technical stuff, just keep clicking yes. Uh, what this is going to do is it's going to create sort of virtual uh, devices and virtual adapters on your Windows or Mac machine uh, that your 
virtual machines can use to do things like interface with your network, like, so you can have internet access on them. Um, good, so presuming you've got VirtualBox installed, click New to create a new machine, and we'll just call this uh, Linux Learning, and it correctly guesses that we're using Linux, this is, these are like old kernels, um, we'll just say, uh, oh, there we go, wow, it even has Ubuntu. Uh, we will hit next, and it'll ask how much memory we want to give it. I'm going to give this, let's say 2048, so just about 2 gigs. Click next, we'll create a new virtual hard drive. This is fine. So just hit next. Dynamically allocated just means that it's not going to take a chunk of hard drive space right now. It will simply slowly grow as a file or set of files on your disk um, as you approach the limit that you're going to set here. And I think 8 gigs is just about fine. That will be more than enough. Um, you could probably get away from what we're doing with something like 4 gigs. So double click to power the machine on or you can just hit start. And here you're going to click and navigate to the image you just downloaded so it can boot from that. Select that. Okay. Hit start. So it's going to boot up from that install CD or lab CD. If you're having trouble with this, um, just Google around or search around for, um, you know, VirtualBox and then whatever error you're seeing on the screen because there's a million people who try this without turning on their virtualization support and you'll get it fixed quickly. Um, this is just some software licensing crap. I would install third-party software and if you're really going to be using this as a work machine and not just a learning machine, you can go ahead and download updates, but I don't care about that. We're going to erase the disk and install Ubuntu. Um, if you're going to do this on a machine for actually working on, um, if you really want to make uh, Linux your main operating system, which by the way is a great idea if you really want to learn it. I would recommend uh, checking both of these boxes. So using LVM on the disk, that's the, the logical volume manage, manager for Linux. And what that does is it basically just abstracts uh, storage from being like physical things like partitions, which are kind of annoying to resize once you have them and they're like correspond to like physical locations on the disk. Um, and this abstracts that, so you create these abstract volumes that are on the partitions, um, and these are very easy to, like, if you want to shrink or um, or enlarge them. I was going to say embiggen, which is one of my favorite words, but unfortunately it doesn't exist. So if you want to shrink or embiggen these, these logical partitions, these logical volumes later, um, you can do that very easily, and what it does is underneath it, it'll just create a new physical partition or, um, or add to the size of one, but it, it sort of frees you from having to deal with that gunk yourself. It's also much faster. Um, and I would also encrypt it just because you should just be encrypting stuff by default. Um, it's just like, hello, I would like some privacy. Um, and that will ensure that, um, whatever you put inside that logical volume, so your entire operating system, most of it, uh, will be encrypted, and so if someone just like bashes your computer open and steals your hard drive, they won't be able to get any of your personal data from it. You know, you just won't have any problems. Um, you can, these aren't, like, the one doesn't depend on the other, so you can just encrypt it and not use LVM, or you could just use LVM and not encrypt it, doesn't matter. Okay, but we're just gonna erase this disk and install it, because we're lazy, and this is just, for learning. I am in Austria right now, believe it or not. If you can't tell by my accent and my love for violent, violent operating systems. Alright, American layout. And we'll just choose a name. So just choose a username and password, and 
Um, if you're already using full disk encryption, um, you don't need to do this. But if you're not, if you didn't choose encrypt the disk before, um, so if you're not using Lux in this case, just um, encrypt your home folder because that again prevents that that nasty someone stole my computer and they have access to all my data now problem. But we don't need that because this is just a learning machine. Getting tired of hearing that? Uh, for God's sake, I mean, just, just, no. This is all this add-on crap that Ubuntu tries to sell you. Oh, hello there. I'm so sorry you caught me looking at one of my favorite games. Good, that's enough for a recommendation. Uh, once you're done installing, just restart the old machine. Okay, so you've now got a working Linux machine running in a virtual machine. Good. I hope you enjoyed.